Welcome, my name is Dominique Genou. I work for Oracle Server Technologies. This is the second of two demonstrations about in-memory caching new features introduced in Oracle Database 12102. This one illustrates the automatic big table caching feature enhancing the in-memory parallel query capabilities of the Oracle database in both single instance and Oracle rack environments. An optional section of the buffer cache called the big table cache is used to store data for table scans. If a large table is approximately the size of the combined size of the big table cache of all instances, the table is partitioned and cached, or mostly cached, on all instances. With in-memory parallel query, this could eliminate most discretes for queries on the table, or the database could intelligently read from disk only for those portions of the table that does not fit in the big table cache. Query scans can use a different cache replacement algorithm. When a table does not fit in memory, the database decides which buffers to cache based on access patterns. This provides efficient caching for large tables even if they do not fully fit in the buffer cache. If the big table cache cannot cache all the tables to be scanned, only the most frequently accessed tables are cached and the rest are read through direct read automatically. The big table cache is integrated with a buffer cache and uses a temperature-based object level replacement algorithm to manage the big table cache contents different from the access-based block level LRU algorithm used by the buffer cache. To use automatic big table caching, you must enable the big table cache. Check the size of the buffer cache. It is currently set to 384 megabytes. The SGA target is set to 2 gigabytes. Set the DB big table cache percent target initialization parameter to a non zero value. The value will represent a percentage of the buffer cache. We will set it to 80% of the buffer cache. Ensure that forceful database caching is disabled because it is incompatible with this automatic big table feature. We now run several queries on various tables. Application tables and then display the statistics about the objects loaded into the big table cache. Observe in the VDollarBT scan cache the allocated space and the number of objects loaded into the big table cache. There are none. Observe in VDollarBT scan object temps the temperature of any loaded object. Now we query a very large table. There is now one object loaded into the big table cache. The view displays the current ratio of the big table cache section to the buffer cache, the target ratio of the big table cache section to the buffer cache, the number of memory buffers allocated by the big table cache section to objects, and the minimum temperature of the object currently cached by the big table cache section. You can get more details for the object loaded into the big table cache. This is the size of the object being scanned in this instance in blocks. You can also see the temperature of this object. Mem only means that the object is fully cached in the big table cache. If it uh, displayed disk, it would mean that uh, this object is not cached in memory, nor flash. And you can also see the number of blocks that are cached in memory for this object. Reselect data from the table. The response time is immediate because all data is in the big table cache. If we flush the buffer cache, the object is still in the big table cache. But if we restart the instance, the big table cache is flushed and the object needs to be requeried to be reloaded into the big table cache. Let's create another table, another big table, and query the data from the new table. 
the second table is only partially cached in memory and some portion remains on disk and will not be cached for the moment. Let's increase the big table cache percent to 90 and reselect data from the new table line order 2. The number of memory buffers allocated by the big table cache section to objects has increased and now the new table line order 2 is fully cached in memory. Also observe that its temperature has increased. Let's create another big table line order 3 and query the data from the new table. The new object is loaded into the big table cache. The number of memory buffers allocated by the big table cache section to objects has increased and the new table is partially cached in memory. Try to increase the big table cache we reached its maximum. If we want to load the three tables fully into memory, we have to increase the buffer cache. We reselect data from the new table. It is now fully loaded into memory. When space is required in the big table cache, according to the temperature of the objects, some will free the space to hotter objects. That's why the line order 2 table is partially replaced by the new line order 3 object, which has a higher temperature. A last test, increase the SGA target and the buffer cache. The big table cache is large enough now to fully load the three objects, whichever temperature they have. This is the end of the demonstration and thanks for watching.